everyone, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being here. As you can see from the title, today I'm going to talk about how to get a full PhD scholarship in the UK. I think previously on this channel, I already talk a bit about that in Vietnamese, but I thought it would be nice just to also do it in English so that, you know, um, more of my audience can follow along and also hopefully get some more information on this topic. So, okay. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to share with you my screen so that you can see. So a bit about me. My name is Anne and I'm an international student from Vietnam and previously before my PhD studies I did a master's in education at UCL IOE Institute of Education London and then um, during my master year this is like a one year taught postgraduate program I was also applying for different roles and positions and luckily I got this full scholarship to do a PhD in education at the Open University in the UK. So um, I try to break it down into three steps, but of course there are more to it and I will talk a bit more later. But of course, uh, this is the general process. So first step is getting started. So I started out by asking people around me, you know, about their PhD experiences. What is it involved in doing a PhD? And what is it like to be a doctoral researcher? And it, whether or not it's for me. So I think the first step is very important for us to reach out and to sort of like look externally for, you know, um, references of what people are doing with their PhD experiences. Of course, after that process, um, I began to look internally for a bit. I, I asked myself whether or not I like research and whether or not, you know, PhD career is something that I wanted to do for the next three or four years. And turned out that I got this research idea that I'm interested to pursue for you know the next couple of years and then uh, it comes to the next step where it's called or at least i call it acceleration so i jotted down whatever i had in mind on this topic of uh, language education and politics in vietnam and um, try to polish it in form of a research proposal and then I reach out to my potential prospective supervisors at different universities including the, the Open University of course. So after that I got some feedback from my supervisors and then also received the interest in my research topic as well. I said okay I wanted to do it with you. I want to provide supervision for your research project. That's one of the great news uh, for you to start out your you know PhD application process and then of course after a bit of waiting time then I got like an interview interview invitation from the admission panel I mean last time I think it was like an online interview but of course like they wanted to know more about your experiences and my experiences and also like my my research topics and, and my supervisor were there as well just to get to know each other a little better before we can work together for the next you know couple of years and of course i have to wait i think like three or three or four weeks i, I don't know i can't remember but i got an offer letter and uh, for the phd studentship at the open university um you applied for both at the same time you apply for the place to study and you also apply for the studentship so if you got an offer letter it means that you got for both so um you got the tuition fee pay for you and you also got the offer uh place of study so that's great news and uh, um, now I'm going to move on to a little bit more detail so that you know you can understand my process a little bit better. So the first question that I think lots of prospective applicants wanted to ask themselves and also including myself at the time was like what to prepare for the best PhD application possible. So I'm here to help. Okay, so this is some of my tips. So a typical PhD application will include 
Okay, first of all, the top most important component I would say would be the research proposal. And then we have recommendation letters from your academic tutors and your past supervisors, be it, you know, at your undergraduate level or even your master's level as well. Someone um, that you are close to professionally and can comment on your research ability and your you know, leadership skills, your independent study skills. So recommendation letters, I would say, comes at the second most important component when you do a PhD. And then you have, of course, personal statement. This is uh, the space for you to express your academic interest and also a little bit about your research background just uh, you know to elaborate on your research proposal where you're coming from and also you know your academic position this is a, the perfect space for you to do that also of course academic CV academic CV I would say would be rather different from you know your typical work cv or industry cv where you can you know feel free to go beyond one page and express you know and include lots of your achievements and also your research experiences this is where you can put them in together and then express them even more with your personal statement previously that I've mentioned. And of course, you if you have any like transcripts or your, you know, records of your studies, even if it's just interim transcripts, that would help the admission panel to have like a clearer picture of your situation and of your, you know, your application as a whole. So I, I would encourage to put in as much as you can um, what you have just for the consideration purposes and of course if you are applying separately one is for the place of study and the other is for scholarship then you have like scholarship essays to write okay so okay so that's all the public information i guess that you can easily find down on the public website but now i'm going to move on to share with you some of the insider tips i would say uh, for a successful PhD application, at least from my experiences. So points of consideration. Okay, so first of all, I can't emphasize enough the importance of your research proposals. That's like the living proof evidence to show your supervisors, your admission team, that this is the project feasible to do and you have the ability to pursue it to the end to get it done so the importance of your research proposal so i think that's why it's extremely important for you to stay focused and also be crystal clear on what is it that you want to research you know identify your research interests and reflect on your background locate your research with the vast literature and consider your research methodology thoroughly you know including the in inherent limitations and how you're going to go about to mitigate those problems and also you know make it a priority try to make time for writing up and polishing your piece of work you know check out some of the recent proposal template for your discipline and also you know it also different um, across the, 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 the institutions as well so try to make sure that you know you get the right template for your right application to the right institution of course, you're not doing this alone and you can always seek help and support from other people, including career advisors, academic tutors, prospective supervisor and your peers. So they're there to help you. And I would say that they're willing to lend you an extra pair of eyes to look at your piece. OK, so move on to the next one contacting your potential supervisors this is very important as well so um i will say the relationship between you as a doctoral researcher and your supervisors is is very diverse it can be anything from you know colleague to colleague from junior to senior from you know of course mentee to mentor but also sometimes from, from friend between friend to friend so um your potential supervisors are someone 
will I would say will have like formative influence on your research journey and will shape your sort of like your directions so they are very important people for you to contact even beforehand so i would say do a bit of homework you know be sure that they offer relevant expertise to your research and they are available to supervise of course read your biography from you know university websites and all the sources linkedin for example or their academic websites just to find out whether or not you know you offer a good fit to your expertise because you know at the end of the day the work world of scholarship and academia is so vast there's so much that you can learn so just to save yourself and your supervisors a bit of time by doing some research beforehand to see whether or not they offer the relevant expertise for you okay so next step is very important as well that is to prepare like a kind email of inquiry to your potential supervisors you know You can introduce who you are, where you're coming from, your research interests, and why do you why do you think you and your supervisors can be a good fit? You know, including your know, some relevant supporting documents. Most importantly, I would say that would be your research proposal, especially like highlight the areas of relevance and sort of like shared common interest between you and your supervisors. That would really help as well. Also, just be prepared. This is a little reminder for yourself because I've been there. I've done that. So be prepared to get cold emails and rejections. But you know, also try to be hopeful for more follow-ups from your supervisors for some constructive feedback. And ultimately, there will be some offer to you know to supervise you. So. It can be anything, but if you don't try or you don't ask for it, then you you never get it. So that is the second most important step, I would say. Another point of consideration that I think that it's worth highlighting here is that sort of like the reality of gaining funding for PhD in humanities and social sciences disciplines. Is, I think um, particularly, especially in the UK. Other disciplines. This is just from my experiences, and do take my word with a pinch of salt. There are different types of scholarships for PhD studies. Of course, there will be you know university level of you know scholarship and funding. There will be departmental scholarship. There will be studentship with graduate teaching assistant responsibilities. So it means that you you. Assume some teaching roles and position in, in exchange for your tuition fees and for your, I mean, maybe some stipends as well, and also funding from research councils, external funding, you know, industry funding. There, there are some uh, available, I guess, and then you know, government funding. There are lots of types of, there are lots of different types of scholarship that um, you know, available to you. Um, I think the best way to find out what's on offer would be to subscribe to some scholarship portals for updates and information. I think um, the next one I am quite hesitant to say, but I still gonna just share it anyway. So I would say what I did was that I was trying to be a bit strategic in my research proposal to maximize my funding opportunities. What do I mean by that? I mean. Choose the relevant topics and and sort of diversify the research methodologies, both in terms of quantitative and qualitative, to sort of like explore all the possibilities out there. And of course, um, what I was trying to do was that I try to highlight the impact, the importance of my research, and what contribution they can have, um, you know, to the scholarship, the relevant. Um, You know, academic debate. So that's what I did. Um, I'm not sure if that's one of the factors that make it work, but you know, I'm gonna just share it to you anyways. I think like one of the factors that make it even harder to get scholarship for me was that I am an international student, and funding for international or overseas student 
were quite limited compared to you know other home and EU students. But I have good news for you that research council like ESRC had extended eligibility for PhD scholarships to international students from 2020 onwards. You can you can click on the link that I included here to you know to get more information on that. Okay, so let's move on to the next, and I think it's gonna it's gonna be my final slide already. So where to find PhD opportunities? Okay, so I'm glad that you asked, and I think the first thing that I would do and I would recommend you do is to go on the university websites. You know, um, especially the section on postgraduate research admission office. You know, here I include the link for UCL. Uh, IOE, but of course you can, you know, go and explore whatever that suits your interest. And then, of course, more importantly, I would say that would be to subscribe to scholarship portals I mentioned previously. But here I include some more details on, you know, the resources at least for PhD opportunities in the UK. We have very good sites. Um, like the jobs AC, the jobs at ac.uk slash PhD, or they find a PhD.com, or even postgraduate studentships.co.uk slash funding opportunity. Those are very good resources that I would highly recommend you to check them out. And also, of course, you can always reach out and ask around, you know, um, go on to some postgraduate university fairs or some career services at your university, ask your academic tutor and of course your department as well. These are the relevant and important um, source of support that I, I would highly recommend you try. That nicely wraps up my presentation today and if you have any questions please let me know in the chat box and i will try to answer them as soon as i can thank you very much for your attention and i wish you the best of luck bye